Now, we're here in Chicago for the latest screening of, of The End of Malice. For sure. Uh, we've heard, I think your, your story's probably out there now about, you know, your, your I, don't, I don't want to call it conversion, but uh, your progression in life and where it's taken you at this point. Uh, we've also heard really great things about Louisville and Evansville. How's this experience with the screener so far been for you? Uh, the screening has been incredible. Uh, I'm really enjoying it, um, you know, seeing people's reactions. Uh, every time I see the film, it's like I see it for the first time. I get to see it through the eyes of the audience, and uh, they seem to be responding all at the right times, laughing at the right places, you know, sad at the right times, and, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just reliving it. It's just a great thing, great feeling. It's inspiring. I mean, it, it definitely shows the opportunity, or at least shows a, a level of the dare I say, downside to success to a degree, right? Like you talk quite a bit about the challenges that you ran into, I guess challenges that stayed with you throughout your, your entertainment, right. your music career. Right. You know, I'm I, not sure if I just look at it as a, a, a downside to success. I look at, at it as a downside to life, um, a downside that uh, accompanies disobedience, uh, a rebelliousness, not having any kind of foundation, um, you know, and just letting the wind carrying you left, right, you know, swaying uh, either which way. And, um, you know, and it, it can happen uh, in any aspect of life, no matter what you do. It seemed like you always had a foundation, though. I mean, your family unit yeah. was pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I definitely... Um, you know, I'm very proud of our upbringing, uh, our family unit. Um, you know, so I, I think that would be correct to say that I, I, I did have a foundation. Um, and I think that's uh, just a test more to the fact that even with foundation and having, um, I guess, a good head on your shoulders, you can still make some, some pretty decent mistakes. Yeah. You talk a lot about the conversation that you had when you were, before you'd even put out a record, before you guys were clips, and you had the conversation where, you know, they, I think you were talking to an older woman who was just talking to you about God and talking about, right. you know, just right. the influence that your energy can have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, that woman would be uh, Miss Alberta, and she's just a very uh, important part of my entire story. Uh, just, um, I mean, I just look at how, you know, one minute I'm hanging with uh, a good friend of mine who had just came home from jail and, uh, you know, he was tired of being cooped up inside the house and, you know, because he, he was on house arrest, he said, you know, let's go out in the cul-de-sac. He could only go but so far and at the right time, here comes this lady who wants to witness to us about Jesus Christ. You know, and uh, we definitely, we weren't trying to hear none of that. We were drinking and, you know, probably high or whatever. But, you know, as I look back and I think back on that timing, the timing of him saying, you know, he wanted to get out the house and then we go out and then here comes this lady driving by. I see that God's plan, you know, was way in full effect even before I knew about it. Yeah, I mean, even those themes seem to carry along throughout your career. You look at Lord Willard, for example. Yeah. He'll have no fear. Definitely. Till the casket drops. Definitely. Hear ye him. Listen, man, I even dare say in uh, all of my, my verses, I always made some kind of, uh, you know, so, some kind of reference to God. Um, the only problem was I would take part of the truth and then I would switch it up you know, at the tail end of it and to, to justify me living the way that I want to live or um, doing whatever it is that I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, a lot always sounds better on the coattails of the truth. And uh, I can say that it also makes for some pretty hard verses as well. So, you know. Is Miss Alberta still in your life at this yeah, point? Absolutely. I can't do without that lady. You know, I can't do without that lady. We talk all the time, pray all the time. And, uh, you know, she she lets me know what's going on in her life. And we just have some some great fellowship, man. Like, I love her to death. Yeah. You know, you said something in a, uh, I want to say it was a CNN profile they did on uh, you and your brother, the clips. Right. And, right. Um, you know, there was a part where you said, if you're not cursing or killing, people don't consider it rap in the yeah, music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I just feel like 
and, and, and I'm not against, you know, any of that. And I, and I, I don't start condemning because, you know, I, I found an alternative, um, uh, a different way of doing things. But uh, it just seems like even in rap or even in entertainment, people do things just for the sake of, you know, of doing things like like blowing up buildings. Now that now the movie's supposed to be really good. Never mind the storyline or the plot, you know, or the climax and all of that, you know. And, and if if I'm writing and, and uh, it calls for that perfect curse word to make that perfect point, I just might do it. You know what I'm saying? But you know, uh, cursing and, and and just being uh, you know, off the deep end just for no reason at all, like that no longer makes any sense to me. But you know, I must say, like clips in all of our ignorance man it was a lot of uh great verses and metaphors and similes like it was really art within the clips never mind you know uh uh the content of what we were talking about it was also accompanied with uh some masterpieces in in my idea of hip-hop you know if you ask me well, I'm sure most people would agree. Oh, you know, right. I mean, yeah, well, I'm sure. you, well, you said it. You yeah, it's, said it's it. the I'll truth. Well, it. I'm sure you probably see it more than anything else in with these at least these first two screenings and during yeah. the Q and A's and yeah. talking to at risk youth yeah, and, and people in prison. I mean, absolutely, yeah. there's a, there's got to be something that they are able to. They have to feel like you can relate to what they're talking about. That's right. And that's the that's art right. that you guys put that's out. That's right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's in, in, in incredible to me. And the, at the end of um, the end of Malice, for example, mm -hmm. when after you and your brother are playing basketball, you see the kids over there in the cipher. Right. And you go up to them and you talk to them for a second. Right. And, right. And, and you testify to them briefly, and then you listen to their rhymes. Like it, right. by the end of the movie, I felt like that was a version of when you met Miss Alberta. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It was because you know she didn't uh, shun me. Here it is, a a a woman. You know she's coming out. It's starting to get dark, and she see three guys out hanging out, and we drinking. You know she could have been intimidated, but she was very bold, very adamant. Um, she uh, relies heavily on her faith, and she didn't see those three dudes and just be like, oh, you know they're never gonna be nothing. She came and she took the time out and she talked to us and and gave us a uh, a life changing uh, message. And and now I'm right here, you know, talking to you guys. So you know I really appreciate her for for being obedient. Yeah. Yeah. Was it a tough decision to make this movie or be a part of this film? Uh, no, um, you know, my story, I would have loved to have been able to like, you know, learn my lesson and, and, and then get my life together and, and keep everything to myself. All the, you know, humbling experiences that, that I, that I went through, but I knew that God put me in front of an audience that I had to go back and share with. Oh man, trust me, I would have loved to have been able to keep quiet. You know, uh, y'all see me in my glory. You know what I'm saying? You see me when, when everything was great. So, you know, I had to come out and now tell you that, you know, things have changed and, you know, everything that everyone has known me for, my whole music catalog, all those verses, and I have to come back and say, not so. <laughs> not so. And it's not that the, the lyrics, and the, the lifestyle wasn't real because our life was very nonfiction. I don't even know if the, if the fans even know what they were getting was a front row seat to real life. I mean, um, you know, sitting in, in, in the federal building and looking at the judge and listening to him say 300 months and seeing the, the mothers and the wives and the cousins and the friends and all the crying. And, you know, just a minute ago, we was partying. <laughs> Now we're looking at it, you know, from a, a, a whole different aspect. So we, you know, we, we chronicled that in our music and, and, and we gave you, you know, uh, our, our real life. So and, and to just give you one side when everything was like beautiful and smooth and yeah, look at me and I look like this and I'm dressed like that and I'm driving this. I got to say the whole thing or then I'm fake and I know I ain't fake. Yeah. That, uh... This is the first time I've ever heard you describe waiting on the plane right after your manager was indicted. Right, right. And, and praying for your brother to right, show up. Right, right. I've never, you've done a lot of conversations well, around listen, this. This was listen, brand new for me. I mean, you know, that, that, that story, uh, it, it, it runs deep. 
And, you know, they were they were picking up all of our friends at different times. You know, I had a friend. He, he just had a baby and he wheelchair and his wife. She holding the baby. As soon as he come out the hospital, bam, they got him. I uh, had another friend. He's driving on the interstate, you know, with his girl, his daughter in the car. And the police just come hit, you know, their car, like really crash into their car, you know, to make them pull over. And uh, they were just picking up everybody. You know, I even, you know, had made a... a, a a vignette about it, you know, some time ago or whatever. And it was just a whole bunch of things happening. So we didn't know, you know, who was coming to get picked up next, how it was happening. They was kicking in doors and, you know, making mamas and wives get on the floor where he at, you know, it, just, it was just crazy. So when we were on the, on the plane, you know, while I was on the plane and I didn't see my brother get on the plane, you know, I knew, <laughs> like I knew what was up. Because we never miss flights. It, we won't never late, you know. We usually calling each other, you close, you close by, you almost there, I got your ID, I, you know, just double checking each other and all of that. And I, I hadn't heard none of that. So I'm sitting on the plane and, and, you know, the very last minute, the very last minute, he comes stumbling in the door. So I stood up in the middle of the aisle in front of all those people on the plane and I told him, I was like, yo, I don't know if you thought I was joking. I don't know if you thought I was playing, but I'm letting you know I ain't doing this no more. Like, no more. I'm not doing this. Because, you know, Pusha have a tendency to, to hear me and be like, okay, but thank yo, you know, he coming. He, you know, he, I ain't listening to that or whatever, whatever. But I just let him know in case you didn't hear me the first time. It's a wrap. Yeah. You know, looking back, this is a this year will be the ten year anniversary of Hell Hath No Fury, and mm. it came out in two thousand six. Yeah, I look back on that album, and you know, what you just said, like a lot of your verses were the verses of consequence. You know, um, I'm not coming at your quote unquote famous rapper who turned positive, trying to tell so you, you how, how to live. live. Right, right. But here's something that must pass to the homies. If hustling is a must be, be so, so, so not, not Tony. Tony. Yeah. Like your, your music is followed, uh, followed where you, when I listen to that album, it feels like you were thinking about the things that you ended up, the changes you ended up making. And so for me watching this film, that was also the first time I heard about Miss Alberta. Okay. Which made sense to me in a lineage. When I look at Hell Half No Fury, because your verses in that album, they're all consequence. And there's not that much cursing. You're not talking crazy. Right, right. No, I, most, of I the, know. most of the album. Right, right. I know. I mean, that, that, that's pretty much who I am, you know? It's, it's, it's pretty much uh, who I am. I like to think that I have some uh, type of uh, decency about myself. I mean, I could get just as wretched as, you know, anybody else. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not above anything, and I, I I've done some some uh, serious trespassing, you know, in, in in my career against my family, my wife, and you know some things I had to stop and I had to reevaluate and, and and take inventory of my own life, and that's all this is about, bro. It's all about you know uh, the 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 checks and balances, looking at my experiences and just seeing where I can improve at and, and, and learning from the things that, that I've done and should have done different. And that's I feel like that's life. And and if you're not learning from your experiences, then you tripping. And I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if it's rap music or, you know, playing sports or whatever, whatever, you know, and people are watching you and not just people. They're young kids out here who don't have the luxury that I had, like of having a father, you know, six two, six three, and you better not bring no trouble back into the house. So whatever you're doing out in the street, it better stay out in the street. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and I, I'm sure some young kid out there is listening and, and patterning his life, and I just want to be completely truthful, man. That's it.